Hi, this is Tom Fitterman with Ventana Systems, and I'd like to talk about spreadsheets versus real dynamic simulation software like Vensim and Venity, and I'll illustrate that with a real example. This is the Vision CA model. It was built in California for evaluation of scenarios that conformed with the low carbon fuel standard. This model was extensively peer reviewed. It's probably in the top 1% of spreadsheets that I've ever seen in terms of quality. It just doesn't get much better than this. There's a lot of uh, smart layout and color coding for usability and uh, documentation built into the spreadsheet. Uh, if you browse around, you'll find some scenario data that drives it. Um, but the core of the model is really a series of tabs each of which is dedicated to a vehicle type and fuel combination. So we have autos with gasoline internal combustion engines, uh, cars with that are electric vehicles, cars that are ethanol, cars that are diesel, and so on. And actually, if you uh, browse through, there are a lot more possibilities because you have cars and light trucks and six or seven different uh, fueling technologies. Um, then there's some summary tabs that compute metrics based on those. And if we return to the uh, cover page, there are also a bunch of scenarios. Um, and I've lost track. As you can start to imagine, there's already a challenge here. Uh, here we go. Scenario summaries. So there's a challenge here from dimensionality because we have uh, time consuming one dimension, then we have the vehicle platform type, and we have the fuel type, and spreadsheets are only two dimensional, so we have to go to multiple tabs, and that's confusing. If we had more than three dimensions to represent, say we wanted to add uh, metropolitan areas or counties or some other regional structure to this, we'd be in trouble because we'd have to further proliferate the uh, tab structure. Another source of confusion is simply that it's hard to tell what's actually happening in our equations. So the meat of this model is in a big table that tracks vehicle cohorts over time. And if you look at any one cell, this represents uh, five-year-old vehicles made in 1975 and so on. And there are dynamics here uh, from accumulation as things change over time. But it's a little hard to see what's going on because the vehicles that are five years old in 1975 are the same as the vehicles that were four years old in uh, 1974 uh, and so on. So uh, we have a problem seeing the microdynamics of the stocks and flows here, the state of the system. Uh, and it's also hard to tell how things relate. So here we have vehicles, and on other tabs we have um, uh, aggregate outcomes like emissions, uh, population, vehicle miles traveled, um, so here's vehicle miles traveled. And if you want to know where these things come from, you have to start tracing cells to see what's going on. And of course, the cells uh, don't necessarily have user-friendly names. Um, so this variable is uh, ethanol um, vehicle v miles traveled. And that comes from AA43 on another sheet. What does that mean? Who knows? Uh, without auditing it somewhat arduously. So when we were working on low carbon fuels, we actually took the spreadsheet and translated it to Vensim. Here's the diagram of the Vensim model. Down at the bottom you have the stock of vehicles in each age cohort, fed by sales and diminished by losses as vehicles get old and uh, wrecked or are scrapped. Um, you add up the cohorts and blend in some assumptions about driving uh, to get vehicle miles traveled and uh, also on fuel, assumption, uh, fuel economy data and other things get rolled in there. That gives you total uh, energy use 
in gallons gasoline equivalent for each vehicle and fuel type combination. And then you aggregate that up, convert units, and apply emissions factors. You get emissions and also some reporting variables on total energy use. And uh, for the low carbon fuel standard, you're interested in the emissions intensity per unit of energy uh, that went in. So uh, this is already a lot clearer than the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet shows you the numbers, but in a complicated situation, you'd really like to understand the problem structure. And this is it. In addition to the diagrams, tools like Bensim and Venity give you auditing tools to better understand the structure. Uh, so for example, in Vensim, we can pick a variable like total emissions and do what we call causal tracing. See tree diagrams of the inputs, so it depends on energy and quads. That in turn uh, depends on electric and fuel energy inputs, and the fuel energy inputs depend on vehicle miles traveled and uh, fuel economy and so on. And at any time, you can pause and get a table or a graph of the numbers that you're looking at. We also have tools for auditing other aspects of the model, like checking formal units consistency, which avoids at least a third of common errors that people make. We made it OK in this model by recognizing some implicit uh, fudge factors that were in the original spreadsheet. And then you can play with the model more interactively. Uh, so let's run a base case. And incidentally, uh, we're, um, we're not rejecting spreadsheets. We're simply using them for appropriate purposes. So this model is actually driven by a spreadsheet based on the original that serves as a repository of all the detailed data because spreadsheets are great containers for numbers. Uh, they're just not very good at structure and dynamics. And then the model pulls the information out of the spreadsheet and transforms it and generates the behavior over time that you're seeing here. Uh, so one of the first things we discovered when we started playing with it is that there were some uh, fudge factors um, related to the vehicle fleet. So uh, the model has a vehicle cohort stock, but it turns out the actual vehicle trajectory is influenced by what's called a stock correction factor. And that basically scales the model dynamics to match some input data, uh, historic data about vehicles. Um, but that's bad because that means that the model doesn't endogenously generate the behavior of a real vehicle fleet. It has to be corrected. Um, in order to match history. Uh, so if the dynamics were wrong in the past, there's no reason to expect them to be right in the future, and we'd like to avoid that. In Vensim, we could automatically recalibrate the model to generate uh, loss rates and other coefficients that fit history properly. And it turns out that that's actually fairly important if we uh, run a scenario uh, without the scaling factor, um, what you see is the red line, which is a dramatically different vehicle trajectory. And it's also uh, policy relevant for the future because it, obviously emissions are uh, taking a turn down because of the dynamics of the structure. That, of course, may not be real. Um, so let's get rid of the uh, base case that includes the fudge factors and do an experiment on this. So here's our uh, future scenario for total emissions. You'll notice the dip here is real. That's, uh, that's the first and second OPEC crises that led to a uh, drop in vehicle utilization and an increase in fuel economy after a delay. Um, so now I have a control panel that lets me play around with adding penetration of uh, ethanol vehicles and so forth. And actually, uh, this illustrates another property of the model. In, a, in uh, spreadsheets, the numbers and the structure are all blended. Here we have separation of the model structure from the data. So I have a base model. Um, 
with might have some numbers built into it and it's linked to the spreadsheet but basically all the changes I make to it are volatile so I never lose track of my original model um, that is a uh, big quality control benefit because I think we've all experienced giving a spreadsheet to somebody having them uh, fool around with it change a few numbers and send it back and uh, you no longer have an easy way to determine what was changed and whether it was sort of properly structurally changed or uh, the numbers were ad factored um, on top of whatever was already there. Uh, so model data separation is really an important principle both for quality control and for reusability of the same model structure in other problem situations that are similar. Um, so I'm going to reset myself to the base case without the fudge factors and now let's try a uh, policy experiment and we'll just increase uh, penetration of ethanol vehicles, we'll uh, increase the penetration of electric vehicles and so on and you can see here the emissions outcome and this is just a lot more interactive than uh, changing cells in a spreadsheet. Um, and of course, again, we can use our causal tracing if we want to understand why did emissions change. Well, let's see what the uh, components are. We won't look at uh, all the data because there's a lot. Uh, and so we can see total emissions and then all of the individual components. So here's uh, gasoline cars. Um, diesel and uh, biodiesel and so on are not contributing much here so let's keep tracing that back uh, so there's energy in quads and I can keep following this back until I get to the underlying structure that drove it um, this makes a much more productive environment than the usual spreadsheet auditing tools quality control and interactivity are Nice, uh, but we actually haven't arrived at the most important reason to do dynamic simulation. So to illustrate that, here's a schematic of the model as it exists in the spreadsheet. Uh, it's essentially a tree. Over at the right we have the outcomes we're interested in, emissions and emissions intensity, energy use, uh, and then that scenario is or those outcomes are driven by a set of uh, assumptions about the various drivers. So there's uh, vehicle sales, vehicle miles traveled, fuel efficiency of new vehicles, market share of various fuels, and uh, emissions intensity of those fuels. Uh, so if we can predict or assume or control each of these inputs in the direction that we want, we can generate scenarios that create the outcomes we want. But as soon as you're planning on any reasonably long time horizon, the real question is how do you make these things actually happen? And that's not really a planning problem anymore uh, because you can't control these things at a micro level what you're really interested in is how do these things interact or how do these things plus other forces in the world interact to produce the outcome that we're interested in and when you start to look at it this way you realize a lot of these things are related through prices of fuel prices of vehicles uh, congestion from utilization of roads um, potentially uh, dynamically through prices on emissions or emissions credits and a low carbon fuel standard with a trading system and so forth. Um, and decisions are driven not just by planners desires but also real world things like sales of vehicles depend on losses of vehicles, they depend on adjustment of the vehicle fleet towards consumers desired standards and that in turn depends on things like income, prices, uh, availability of alternative transport modes and so forth. So really the situation that you're trying to manage is 
is not a uh, planning problem that looks like a tree at all. It is a matter of managing a bunch of interacting feedback loops. And as soon as you're in that mode, uh, what you're trying to do is figure out which loops are uh, winners or leverage points um, and which ones you can influence and then you make efforts to nudge the system in small ways and get other uh, stakeholders to participate and so on. And you have a lot of different problems, none of which are really adequately supported by the spreadsheet mindset of uh, sort of creating a tree of inputs to a decision. So anytime you want to solve a hard problem, you're going to be in a messy, loopy situation like this, and you need tools that are capable of dealing with the dynamics and giving you the help you need to solve the problem. These are the kind of messy, dynamic problems that we encounter in our consulting at Ventana Systems, and that's why we built Vensim and Venity. We wanted tools that make us more productive in solving hard problems. We think they can help you with your organization's hard problems too. Check us out and get a free trial at vensim.com and vanity.biz.